Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. Uh, the message today, very serious one, very somber message. This is a message for both Jewish people as well as Zionist, pro-Zionist, and of course uh, the the uh, evangelical community that strongly supports Israel. If there has ever come a time in your life where we really need to wake up to be able to help Jewish people also, especially in an hour that we're living in, where it is critical more than ever that they recognize that Jesus truly is the Messiah and that there was and it still is a law of love, as James brings out in chapter two, this is that hour. So, I took the image that I put on the screen for you. I saw this online somewhere, but they had some extra comments on there about freedom of speech. And in their comment, they had noted that freedom of speech is acceptable if you're speaking about your own government here in the United States or any other government in the world for that matter, with the exception of Israel. If you're critical of Israel, if you're critical of the things that are happening in Israel, you can quickly be labeled anti-Semitic or a self-hating Jew if you're Jewish. But the truth of the atrocities that are being committed are on a horrific scale. And now the world is crying out because of the Palestinians, specifically more so in Gaza, not just the West Bank and Samaria, which has also become a horrible situation, but the more than 30,000 dead. And yes, Hamas did carry out a strike on October the 7th that left over 1,000 Israelis dead. And many of those were taken out by Israel's own hand. Mistakes they made. But obviously, we have pointed out too many times, that whole attack is very questionable. In an Israeli military that did not respond for nearly eight hours is questionable. But we're going to look at this from a different angle because I'm really wanting our Jewish friends in the world to wake up and recognize what they have been through, what God said in his word about what they've been through, and how they're to respond to their neighbors now. And for you as Christians listening to this, I strongly encourage you to listen carefully to the biblical aspects that we'll bring out in this video as well. And if God lays upon your heart to support the work we do, visit our website, israelinewslive.org, or even our Patreon channel, patreon.com forward slash israelinewslive. We've just loaded two new videos there. Easy way to support the work we do. Let's take a dive into this. Let's get started right now. I want to take you back, especially when you're Jewish, and remind you of the horrors that your families have faced. I had many distant relatives also that went through the Holocaust. I've got records from the Yad Vashem. I understand. I've been through the Intifada. I've been through a suicide bombing. I know what you face as well. But think about what you went through, and then let's examine this from the Word of God and what's happening to your neighbors now. Tribe the scene is not possible. I can only give you an idea about it. Every time I talk about it, I... <laughs> Jews were not allowed to walk on the pavements. They had to walk in the gutters. Jews were not allowed to practice their professions. Our heads were shaved. We went through cold communal showers. We had many non-Jewish friends and they all turned against us. The population changed immediately. If you don't regard the people you're experimenting on as people, it makes it so much easier. 
The Nazi regime was concerned to create the perfect society. This abuse, this murder, these maimings, these sterilizations, these experiments are all being carried out supposedly in the name of humanity. Unbelievable that human beings can treat other innocent people like, well, worse than cattle. I don't know what people did to survive because there's nothing they could do to survive. There is no support. There's people just absolutely full with their own misery and pain. That's exactly right. And I'm painting this picture for you for a purpose of memory. Now, if you'll notice in there, this one particular commentator here said that if you don't consider the people you're experimenting on human, it's much easier to experiment. Let's take a look at this particular video that I had in a news article recently and what was said by Netanyahu and many other Israelis about Palestinians. It's an entire nation out there that is responsible. It's not true. This rhetoric about civilians not aware, not, aware, not involved, it's absolutely not true. In Hashmal, in Mazon, in Maim, in Delik, all is closed. We are fighting in the lives of human beings, and we are doing it. Very puzzled by the constant uh, concern which the world is showing for the Palestinian people, and is actually showing for these horrible, inhuman animals who have done the worst atrocities that this century has seen. He doesn't equate them with animals because he said that would be, uh, as uh, Dr. Mordecai points out here, that would be an insult to animals. And the sad thing is, and I'll put the link of this, I meant to put the link in that one video, and for some reason I could not find it. I'll make sure I put the link in this video so you can see the rest of this for yourself. But this is exactly what we saw in this Holocaust uh, trailer that I was playing for you here, the name of that Horrors of the Holocaust official trailer. And this is what this man here says. If you don't consider the people that you're doing these atrocities on, these experiments on, as human then it's easier to do the experiments. It'd be the same thing. It's easier to kill them if you don't consider them as human. It'd be just like taking out animals' lives. Correct? Correct me if I'm wrong, please. You know, and then also we have, and I'm bringing this one up because we're going to, uh, well, actually, let me just do like this here. Let's go ahead and put the, look at the scripture right here. This is an exodus and we are in chapter 23. Keep thee far from a false matter. The innocent and righteous slay you not. Okay, let me let me put that right there. Let me let's re-highlight it. And let's put it. Well, it's not wanting to work for me right now. Make it to where you can see it better. Keep thee far from a false matter. And the innocent and righteous slay thou not. You think those little children in Gaza were guilty of killing Israelis? Hamas was funded by Benjamin Netanyahu because he was so worried about Palestinians having a two-state solution. So he made sure back in 2019 before the Knesset to tell the Knesset members, we must continue to fund Hamas. He created what he deems to be a monster or non-human. 
and many Palestinians did not like them. Oh, yes, they won the elections. They claimed they were free and fair. But, you know, but then again, you got to remember, too, Palestinian people have been oppressed for more than 70 years. For I will not justify the wicked. So God tells you through Moses, don't kill the innocent and righteous. He said, I will not justify you when you're wicked. And thou shalt take no gift, for a gift blindeth them that have sight, and perverteth the words of the righteous. Boy, isn't that the truth? And a stranger shall you not oppress. Right here in purple. Let's make it black so you can see it better. For you know the heart of a stranger. At least you're supposed to know it. Seeing you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Your forefathers were oppressed by the Germans. You don't remember Egypt, I'm sure. But Germany, you do. So therefore, when we see the, the horrors even that happen in Egypt, and we really, even though Moses and Aaron go before Pharaoh and stuff, we really have no clue what the Israelites really went through under the hard bondage that Pharaoh put them under. I have read accounts in some writings that are not in part of the canon to where in one place there that when they offended the Pharaoh, made him so angry, he took and he went down and he would make up. They didn't do their tally of bricks. He made them bury their children alive in the walls of the building. In other documents, they would bury them and put them underneath the temple that they would build. So there were some real horrors that were going on. But the thing is, Israel, you're not doing much different. You're burying the children in the rubble by dropping your bombs down on the children of Gaza. The mothers, the children, fathers that have nothing to do with Hamas, you bury. The, what some 60 journalists have you killed as well because they dare tell the truth, targeting in some cases intentionally. It's amazing of the crimes that are taking place in this world as a result. I want to show you here a clip from this one here, How Israel Stole Palestine. Uh, this young man here that does this documentary here, very good work here. But maybe it'll give you a little bit better insight because God has said to you not to oppress the stranger. And really and truly, Palestinians are not strangers. They've been in this land for the last 2,000 years. Now, some, of course, have migrated from Egypt, some from Jordan. That is true. But there is already about 50% are ethnic Jews from the days of Jesus when the Roman Empire came and destroyed this land and drove out the occupants, drove out the Jews that were there, killed them, slaughtered them. But they kept the ones that were out into the countryside to continue to grow food for the Romans. And over time, then the Ottoman Empire lasted for over 600 years and ruled them as well. And many of them were forced to convert to the Muslim religion. Some went to Christianity, but some are still Jewish. They may not go with the traditional Talmudic idea of Judaism, but nonetheless, let's look at what he says here. And if it couldn't get any worse... May 15th, 1948 was perhaps one of the darkest days in Palestine's history. They called it the Nakba, or the catastrophe. To lose your country, your identity, and your home just like that is something truly horrifying. But that wasn't enough for those Palestinian men, women, and children. They had to be ethnically cleansed from their lands and driven into near total destruction. See, the creation of the State of Israel didn't just mean that 1.9 million Palestinians were forced out of their homes. It didn't just mean that 78% of historic Palestine had been taken from its natives. It didn't just mean that 530 villages and cities were destroyed and ethnically cleansed. And it didn't just mean the killing of 15,000 Palestinians in a series of mass atrocities. It means that it was the start of something even more horrifying for the Palestinian people. It signaled over 70 years of occupation, 
Home demolitions, arbitrary arrests, displacements, Israeli expansion, military checkpoints, construction of walls, discrimination, massacres, and bombing of innocent men, women, and children in their own homes. So no, it's not complicated. The Palestinians are a people who have been oppressed and had their lands taken away from them and have been suffering ever since. This is how the events of the past shape the conditions of today. This is why it is important to remember and reflect our history before it repeats itself again. Because Allah knows we don't need it to happen again in another part of the world. May Allah lift the pain and the struggles from our Palestinian brothers and sisters. And I'm not here to support any religious theologies or ideas, but I do support the truth. And yes, the Palestinian people are oppressed beyond words. We're going to now go through the biblical aspects a little deeper because I want to show you why this has gotten so evil. Why is it that the leadership, and I'm going to really bring it down hard on the leadership, the Ben Gavirs, the Smotrich, the Netanyahus that are running this country, because not all Jewish people are this blind and corrupt. But you'll see why this blatant disregard to God's word not to oppress the stranger is occurring. This here is from Jeremiah. And uh, we will quickly look up here, chapter 7. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will you still murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and offer unto Baal and walk after other gods whom you have not known? Sadly enough, yes, that's what Israel will continue to do. And come and stand before me in this house. Of course, that's when there was a temple. Whereupon my name is called and say, we are delivered that you may do all these abominations. Is this house whereupon my name is called become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, I, even I have seen it, said the Lord. For go you now into my place, which was in Shiloh, where I caused my name to dwell at the first and see what I did for the wickedness of my people Israel. So he tells you what's coming. But remember too, and I forgot to read this one here. Verse 6. If you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, then will I cause you to, to dwell in this place in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. You see... It, the, the people of Israel could have the right to live in this land if they would do it with equality with their neighbors. But as he said, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will you still murder and commit adultery? Sure they will. They've never changed. But somebody could change. Somebody could wake up and stop oppressing the stranger. And like I said, stranger to them, but not strangers to the land. Now we're going to go into this to the deep heart of the matter. And now you'll know why this has become so difficult for the leaders of Israel to make that change. We're in Hosea chapter 12. We're going to start here with verse 7. Therefore, turn you to thy God. Keep mercy and justice. And wait for thy God continually. Now, it says here in verse 8, as for the trafficker. But in reality, that's the reason I highlight, highlighted it in black. It doesn't say that. It says Canaan. Canaan, the balances of deceit are in his hand. And the reason it uses Canaan or Canaan is because it is his descendants. 
Cain's descendants. The balances of deceit are in his hand. Now, most people would say automatically that Israel is not Cain's descendants, but you're going to find out there are many of the elite, and I will say it that way, of the elite of Israel that truly are the descendants of Cain, and Jesus said they were. The balances of deceit are in his hand. He loves to oppress. That's what it says. La asak, la asak ohev. He loves to oppress. And Ephraim said, Wow. And Ephraim said, Surely I am become rich. I have found me wealth in all my labors. They shall find in me no iniquity that were sin. So the Canaanite is actually attributed to Ephraim. Now, Ephraim, not as a tribe of Ephraim. You have to remember Joseph, when he married uh, uh, Asenath, they had two children, Ephraim and Manassas. It is really more symbolic of a mixed tribe that, that was brought into the covenant of Israel. But in this case here, he is likened to Cain, a Canaanite. And so in a moment, you'll see why I take this stand on this. In Matthew chapter 23, we read, and you've heard me say this many times, starting with verse 29, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchers of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. And I say to you today, according to Nehemiah Gordon himself, who declares and has said, and he's not the only one, Tobia Singer has also said it, that in order to be able to be a rabbi, an Orthodox rabbi of today, you have to be able to prove your lineage to the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago. So there you have it. And they were called hypocrites. And they claimed they would have not been in partakers of the blood of the prophets. But Jesus says, Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. That's why they still oppress to this day. But watch, let's listen, let's go further. Fill you up the measure of your fathers. You serpents, you generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men, scribes, and some of them shall you kill and crucify. Some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel and to the blood of Zechariah, son of Barcaeus, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. So Jesus has indicted the Pharisees for the very blood of Abel, who was killed by none other than Cain, which makes them Pharisees, descendants of of Cain. They are indeed Canaanites. Although they have intermingled in marriage, they have mixed in amongst the, the, the tribes of Israel over the times. And this is no doubt why God had such an anger with them for mingling their seed with the Hittites, Perzites, Jebusites, etc. That's why I brought out Ezra 9 the other day, where they did that while they were down in Babylon and mingled the seed once again. And this was the house of Judah. And the Pharisees are born from that house, from that adulterous affair. That's why he mentioned back over here about the adultery. And yes, they will. They will continue on. In Malachi chapter 3, we read, And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers. 
and against false swearers, against those who oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, change not, and you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers you have turned aside from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you. And he gave them that opportunity, but they have rejected even that. And it's finally going to come down to when we get to chapter 4 of Malachi, which in the Hebrew Bible is still chapter 3 where he's going to say, for behold, the day comes that will burn as a furnace and the roundabout, and excuse me, and all the proud and all that work wickedness shall be stubble. And, and the day that cometh shall set them ablaze, saith the Lord of hosts, that shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth and gamble as calves of the stall and you shall tread down the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I do make, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him and to Horeb for all Israel, even the statutes and ordinances. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the land with utter destruction. And John the Baptist fulfilled half of verse 24, but the heart of the children to their fathers is yet to be fulfilled. So I say, do not oppress the stranger. Those of you that are Jewish, those of you that are Christians that support the Jewish people, if you ever wanted to support the Jewish people, help them to wake up to who the Messiah really is. Quit supporting such idolatrous behavior, such Baal worship and sacrificing their children, not their children in this case, but they sacrifice the Palestinian children. And keeping in mind, 50% of those are actually ethnic Jews. So in reality, they are continuing the Baal worship, sacrificing Jews on the altar. And they're willing to start a war in the Middle East with Iran that will force Russia in, China in, and that may all be staged in the begin with, but they'll force that in to sacrifice another, what, six million Jews to fulfill Talmudic prophecy? When will you wake up? I'm Stephen Benoon. Consider the support of the work that we do. I believe God's laid it upon your heart many times. Today's a good day. Danoon Institute, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, or like above on my head there, Stephen Ben Noon, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. And of course, always the quickest way, so you don't forget, right there online, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Click right there and you're in there. If you're watching us over on iConnect, iConnect, all you got to do when you go into iConnect to one of our videos, there's a very, in fact, right there, video there, um, you can just go right below the video and you can donate right there as well, easily, on iConnectFX.com. And consider getting yourself a channel there. There are so many benefits on iConnect, and they have worked out so many of these issues that people have gone through in the past. Anyway, thank you for listening. And God bless you.